Good morning, good afternoon, or possibly good evening, depending upon when you're watching this video. Hi, my name is Dale McKay. I'm a staff technical marketing architect here at VMware Carbon Black. For about the next 15 minutes, I'd like to take you through the Carbon Black Workload Sensor Gateway version 2 and what's new. Earlier this year, in fact, uh, back in April, we released the Sensor Gateway functionality. And what we wanted to do with the Sensor Gateway was to provide that secure gateway for all inbound and outbound communication from the sensors that reside in a particular environment to the Carbon Black Cloud. Some of our customers had a need to limit the attack surface into a particular environment and the sensor gateway definitely allows you to do that by focusing all of the sensor communication through that sensor gateway you now eliminate quite a bit of uh, surface attack for someone outside of the environment. We also wanted to make the sensor gateway reliable and highly available. You can Definitely do that. You can deploy it in pairs and ensure that you do have that high availability. We also wanted to make it easy. We wanted to make sure that each sensor gateway could support a lot of sensors, in our case, 10,000 sensors. But additionally, we wanted to make it easy for additional gateways, gateway sensors to be spun up when required. Now, obviously, one of the goals of the sensor gateway was to ensure that uh, this helped our customers improve their overall security posture by again limiting that attack surface. We also wanted to make sure that there were some notifications and alerts in the event that there was an issue with the sensor gateway. And of course, as always, we wanted to provide some broad OS support, not just for the sensor gateway, but also for all of those sensors. So that's kind of a recap of what our initial goals were with the sensor gateway. The next thing I want to cover is some of the, and I just want to go back and quickly recap this. There was some prerequisites for installing the sensor and you can see what those are. The hardware requirements, the software requirements, and in particular notice that one of the software requirements was you had to have Docker installed along with uh, some other tools depending upon how you were going to deploy and utilize that particular sensor gateway. You also had to do some work with some certs, static IPs, DNS, all the kind of normal things that you would do prior to deploying a gateway or an appliance. And there were multiple steps you can see the steps listed on the left, that's what you had to do to set up your environment. And then you also had to install the sensor gateway. And then you had to go and install the Carbon Black sensor on those devices that you wanted to connect to the sensor gateway so they could then connect on to the Carbon Black Cloud. One of the big things you had to do was to run this install script. Now, all of this had some requirements up front. Again, there was a need for a Linux host, whether it was a VM or a physical box. And what we've done now is we have released a sensor gateway in an OVA form factor. Now, what this allows you to do is to deploy the sensor gateway just like you would deploy any other VMware appliance. Basically, when you start the deployment of the OVA or the OVF, it's going to ask you some questions and I have a demo where we're going to walk through this. You're going to answer those questions and then you will power on that VM that gets created as a result of importing that OVA and at that point if everything has been done correctly you should have a functioning sensor gateway. It's much easier to do, in fact I'll show you this in the demo, than what we had previously released earlier this year. We also have the ability for the sensor gateway 
that is deployed via the OBA, OVA form factor to talk to a forward proxy, further limiting that attack surface that's available outside the environment. So what are the prerequisites for uh, Sensor Gateway version 2? Well, you just need existing CPU and memory on some vSphere host that's in your environment. The default OVA has 8 CPUs, 8 gig of RAM, and 4 disk for a total of 100 gig. That's actually a pretty lightweight VM. Now we do still have some software requirements, but notice that there's nowhere on there is the requirement for Docker or Linux or any of the other things that were there in what we'll call Sensor Gateway version 1. All right, so now let's jump right into the demo and I'll show you all of this. I've put together a little video of a Sensor Gateway OVA install and before we start into the demo, I just wanted to highlight some of the steps that were required for you to deploy the Sensor Gateway version 1 or in its previous iteration. So let's just kind of go ahead and walk through what that looks like. This would be version 1. So one of the first things that we had to do is we had to find or build a Linux host. And okay, maybe we have a Linux VM or a Linux physical box sitting around that we can use. Next, we had to install Docker on that particular physical or VM that had Linux running on it. We had to not only install Docker, but we also had to install all the related Docker files. And you can see on the screen, we're kind of walking through that process. There were a lot of steps to accomplish our goal of getting that sensor gateway deployed. First, we had to install Docker. And you can see we're still walking through installing that Docker. Next, uh, we had to go and check the Docker service status. You'll see we checked it right there. And indeed, Docker is running. Now the next thing that we had to do was we had to go and enable Docker. We had to enable it so that each time that Linux box rebooted, we'd have Docker available. We had to add the user to the Docker group. We had to update the user group. All of these were steps that were required we, and then we had to go and download the install script. You can see we're downloading the install script there. Then we had to unzip that install script. And then we had to go and create the certs and the cert directories. And we had to make sure that everything was aligned. And then finally we'd get to the point where we'd be able to install the sensor gateway. We would run a shell script. And you know what? Let's just stop all that and let's do it the easy way. I promised you that I would walk you through an OVA install. Well, let's do that now. Let's look at a sensor gateway OVA install. This is going to install like any other OVA. If you've ever installed one, you're going to find that OVF template. In our particular case, we're going to rename that virtual machine to something very simple. And you notice that there are about six steps. Now, some of these steps have multiple uh, questions as part of that step. But we're going to step through all of these. You're gonna, we're going to review the details. And you can see there's not much to review. It does talk about the size of the disk. You're going to accept the license agreement. And notice that most of this is kind of running in real time. So this is not going to take you a long time. We just selected the storage. Now we need to go and select the network that we want our sensor gateway to be connected to in our vSphere environment. We're connected to a distributed switch port group. And now there's going to be a series of questions. Not a lot of questions, but there will be some questions. You'll, right now we're filling out what our initial root password is and our initial admin password. Next, we're going to fill in the Carbon Black Cloud URL, and this will be in a HTTPS uh, format. We'll fill that in right now. 
then we would have already created API access for the sensor gateway. We should have an API ID, which we'll fill in. And there will also be a secret key for that API. And you'll want to enter that twice where it says password. That API secret key that you got from the Carbon Black Cloud configuration when you created the API access for the sensor gateway. Now you'll also want to utilize the sensor gateway entry point. This will be the URL for that particular sensor gateway. And you can see that it's simply, in my case, host name with a domain name attached to it. Now you should have created a gateway certificate. You cut and paste that certificate in its entirety into the sensor gateway certificate. And then you'll cut and paste the private key where it says password and confirm password. So when you create that cert and that private key, you'll want to hold on to that information, place it here just like you see me doing on the screen. If you were using a cert that had a certificate chain file, this is where you would enter that. And if you were using a password on that private key, which of course you should be doing, you would also enter that there. Notice that if I was going to configure a proxy, which we're not going to do, we just went through those four questions that you would need to answer in order to configure that forward proxy. Now we're entering network information for our particular sensor gateway, like the gateway, the domain name. We'll enter the domain name servers that we want our particular sensor gateway to utilize. And then we'll utilize uh, a network address and a network mask. And that's it in terms of the questions that we have to answer in order to deploy the sensor gateway utilizing that OVA or OVF form factor. Notice that up at the top of the screen it said all the uh, we have valid values for all of the required information that we need to enter. So now we're going to watch as uh, this OVA or this OVF gets imported and then deployed. And again, this is being done in real time. We're, I don't know, maybe uh, about uh, six minutes into this. And we're already at the point where we're deploying the sensor gateway. It's going to come up as a VM. And when it comes up as a VM, we're going to go in and we're going to turn on the VM. We're going to do that right now. So once we turn on that VM, it's going to start to boot up. And notice I'm calling your attention to the fact that it's eight CPUs, eight gig of memory, and a total of 100 gig of disk spread across four disks. So let's go ahead and power on the VM that got created. Now, once we powered it on, this is where we can go to the Carbon Black Cloud, and we can see the sensor gateway is indeed connected. And you can see a lot of information of, over on the right-hand side. I can see the IP address. I can see the status. I can see the API ID. Now, again, going into the Carbon Black Cloud, let's go take a look at one of the devices in our environment. And notice I'm going to be able to tell that device to start utilizing that sensor gateway for its connection. I called out the sensor gateway, I save, and then what's going to happen is there's going to be communication to that particular endpoint, informing it of the sensor gateway. And in a minute, we'll do a quick refresh. And now notice that that sensor gateway is reflected in that particular endpoint. So in less than 10 minutes, we deployed the sensor gateway, we configured it, and we configured endpoints within our environment. So in a little less than 10 minutes, we were able to configure, deploy, a sensor gateway in our 
vSphere environment and then go into the carbon black cloud and instruct the sensors to start using that sensor gateway for their connectivity. My name is Dale McKay. I'm a staff technical marketing architect at VMware Carbon Black, and I'd like to thank you for your time.